Welcome to the Bogosity Podcast for the 25th of July, 2011, the podcast that gives you liberty or gives you high blood pressure. This is your host, Shane Killian. Let's rattle the cage of the news of the bogus. Every time you think the politicians can't possibly be any more brazen about their hatred for our precious liberties, others step up to lower the bar even further. Case in point, the City Council of Gould, Arkansas. They wrote an ordinance that bans any citizens group that discusses local politics unless they first have approval from the city council. Yes, you heard that right. People can't even get together and talk about local politics without permission from local politicians. They said that no such group, quote, shall be allowed to exist in the city of Gould without approval from the Gould City Council. It also said that neither the mayor nor the city council members could, quote, discuss city business without two-thirds of the city council's vote to do so. This includes meetings held inside or outside the city limits. The mayor nor the council members shall attend or participate in any meeting with any organization in any location without city council approval by two-thirds vote. Wow. What could their justification possibly be? Hear it yourself from city council member and would-be tyrant Sonia Farley. You couldn't just come in here and get with four people and decide you want to start an organization. You will go through your city council with legal documentation, the right paperwork, and get an approval. Yeah, where do you think you are anyway? You think you're in a country where you have the right to free speech, the right to peaceably assemble? and the right to petition the government for redress of grievances? No, you need to get down on your knees and pray to the holy and divine saints on the city council to be granted this privilege. Unbelievable. According to Katherine Johnson, news reporter for Fox 16 in Little Rock, this law is vague enough that it could apply to Boy Scout troops and even conversations at your own dinner table. This is what her fellow reporters had to say. Speechless. I I mean, all of us. You've got to be kidding me. (laughs) I think that's what everyone's thinking right now. So if I want to have a book club in my home, I can't do that? Not if you're going to mention the city at all. (laughs) And you wouldn't be able to interview the mayor or the city council without their approval if the ordinance was in effect. If the ordinance were in effect today, my interviews with the mayor would have been Illegal. 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 Right now, according to the council members, this ordinance is already in effect, even though the mayor is not recognizing it. So what happens if you form a group and you're talking city business without council approval? What, what are the penalties? Right. I asked what the consequences would be. I wasn't really given an answer, and there isn't one written into the ordinance. I was told by council member Farley that there would be a penalty, probably a fine, but they still haven't even worked that out yet. John DePippa, dean of the School of Law at the University of Arkansas in Little Rock, was equally stunned. I couldn't believe that it was real when I first read it. Well, the truth is, the city of Gould doesn't have the authority to tell anyone that they have no right to petition them and no right to speak and no right to exist in their city. It also extends to you talking to your mother or a church group or any other group that wants to form a garden club. I mean, that is so broad that it can't possibly um, comply with the First Amendment. Fortunately, it seems like the city's mayor, Ernest Nash, is standing firm for the rights of the citizens of Gould. I feel as though our city's been held hostage. They have passed uh, ordinances that are unconstitutional. They violate state law and federal law. And in no way am I going to sign those into law. And if they want them into law, they're going to take me to court. I'm a Baptist preacher, okay? And my views on... Gay and lesbianism is my view. But if a gay and lesbian group came into this community and wanted to organize, I can't stop them. Because if I do, I'm violating their First Amendment rights. I'm violating their civil rights. And this is America. Even though this is Gould, Arkansas, it's still part of America. And in America, you just can't vote and violate people's constitutional rights. I don't care if you're the city council. I don't care if you're state legislator. I don't care if you're the U.S. Congress. You just cannot violate people's civil rights. And so for them to come in and tell the citizens that you can't meet, that's appalling. Right on, Mayor Nash. Here's a politician who understands what it means to serve the people and protect their rights. 
Unfortunately, he's worried that the city council will pass this over his veto. If that happens, here's hoping the ACLU, the Institute for Justice, and every other such organization steps in. We have 845 citizens according to the census. They have opened us up to 845 possible lawsuits. Because each citizen could say, I want to start a group, and the city council is prohibiting me from exercising my constitutional right. So therefore, I want to file a lawsuit. And wouldn't that be an amazing thing? Imagine the city council stooges like Sonia Farley having to go to court 845 times over this stupid and ridiculous law. Maybe one day they'll get the idea. Rights are not things that politicians allow us to have. They are things that people fight for. The UN has given a very low-key approach, with little fanfare, to announcing the result on the progress of their Millennium Development Goals. The reason for not making a big deal about it is apparently because it concluded the opposite of what the UN believes. According to the report, redistribution of wealth doesn't diminish global poverty. Free market economic wealth creation does. The UN attempted to lift countries out of poverty by transferring money to the developing world, but what their report shows is that, in areas such as Sub-Saharan Africa, with very few business opportunities, there hasn't been that much of a poverty reduction, as opposed to countries that have undergone free market reforms, like many Asian countries, where growth has skyrocketed and poverty has seen the greatest reductions. In those countries, the poverty rate is estimated to drop below 5% by 2015. Most of them exceeded the UN targets, with the overall poverty rate dropping from 60% to 16%. Whereas countries in Sub-Saharan Africa only saw poverty drop from 58% to 51%. The report also made the same statement about environmental sustainability, where they said the solution was to, quote, promote access to affordable land with secure tenure and create the conditions in which people are able to carve out and sustain a livelihood. In other words, make people capitalists and you'll have fewer poor people and a more sustainable environment. We all know it's better to teach a man to fish than to give a man to fish. And yet, the UN is showing no signs of changing their policy as they still insist the countries transfer over $100 billion a year to developing countries. It seems that some people just don't want to listen, even when it's their own report that's trying to teach them the lesson. In 2009, police in Lufkin, Texas burst into a home and attempted to arrest Marco Salceda for burglary. And when he hid from them, they arrested him for resisting arrest. One problem. It was Salceda's own home. He wasn't a burglar at all. Salceda suffers from an intellectual disability, which gives him the mind of a child, and he's also unable to speak English. So when he heard strangers bursting into his home and yelling, he naturally feared for his life and locked himself in the bathroom. When police forced their way into the bathroom, they sprayed him with pepper spray, shot him with a pepper ball gun, and arrested him. He finally got his trial after two years, where prosecution stooge Gary Taylor told the jury, quote, His behavior was more consistent with a burglar than an innocent person, and that's what got us here today. If you've got a language barrier, you find somebody to help accommodate. Come on, Taylor! How's he supposed to find someone to translate for him while he's hiding in his bathroom scared of what he thinks are armed intruders? Hey, you know what? Scratch the he thinks part. They WERE armed intruders! Not only was Salsena not guilty of any crime, no crime was taking place at all! You'd think a jury wouldn't stand for this, but sadly, they came back with a guilty verdict. But a note they sent to the judge says why. Quote, We've all reached a verdict. To us, we feel he has been wronged. Please consider that in his sentencing. The jury, having been lied to as all juries are nowadays, weren't aware that it was not only their right, but their duty to refuse to convict someone they think has been wronged by the system, as Salceda clearly was. They could have come back with a verdict of not guilty, and no authority on earth could have reversed that ruling or punished the jury in any way. Jury nullification is incredibly important to any system of justice. It's important that juries act as independent, free-thinking agents, not servants of the very state that is acting to take someone's freedom in the first place. 
What's inexcusable here is the response of the judge, Derek Flournoy. At the sentencing hearing, he told Salceda, quote, I haven't heard from you, and I have no idea why you didn't speak. That causes me some trouble. Oh yeah? Well, you know what causes me trouble? The fact that you're acting like the willing stooge of a tyrannical government when you swore an oath to the Constitution. A Constitution that makes it plain that Salceda doesn't have to say one word at all. It's up to the prosecution to make the case, and you are not allowed to give any defendant a greater sentence just because they didn't say anything. Flournoy also said, quote, I don't agree with the notion that you are a victim in this case. I think your actions put you and the officers in harm's way. This could easily have been avoided. No, you sorry excuse for a judge. The officers put him in harm's way. This could have been easily avoided by the police not busting into someone's own home and trying to arrest him as a burglar. Don't the police have any kind of responsibility to actually make sure that a crime is even happening before they go scaring the daylights out of an innocent, mentally disabled resident? Salceda's lawyer has filed a civil suit against the city. Best of luck to him. And now it's time to inoculate ourselves against this week's biggest bogan emitter. It seems one more popular media outlet has fallen into the anti-vaccination cesspool. The Baltimore Sun recently published two opinion pieces spouting the talking points of this hideously dangerous pseudoscience. The first one was a piece by Mark Geyer, who, with his son David, advocates what they call the Lupron Protocol. For the low, low price of five to $6,000 a month, they will cure your child of autism by removing excess testosterone. They administer the drug Luprolide, which, when used on children, can act as a form of chemical castration, creating irreversible damage to their sexual development and functioning. It's used on pedophiles to reduce their sexual urges, and it is a very drastic treatment for prostate cancer. And there's no evidence whatsoever that it's even a treatment for autism. According to Simon Baron Cohen of the Autism Research Center at Cambridge University, quote, The idea of using Lupron with vulnerable children with autism, who do not have a life-threatening disease and pose no danger to anyone, without a careful trial to determine the unwanted side effects, or indeed any benefits, fills me with horror. As well it should. Little wonder that Geyer's medical license was revoked, but here comes the Baltimore Sun, all ready to give him a platform to try and gain it back again. Geyer's claim is based on the long-refuted notion that autism is caused by mercury poisoning when there isn't any evidence of any link between autism and mercury or any other kind of heavy metal poisoning. He claims that the mechanism for this is too many male hormones, so he uses Lupron to try to reduce them. There is no evidence whatsoever that this helps even slightly, and the children are put at tremendous risk of lifelong damage to their reproductive systems. As if that weren't bad enough, they followed it up soon after with a piece by Margaret Dunkel, who is one of the idiot voices behind the Too Many Too Soon garbage. For support, she cited Gail DeLong, who is not an immunologist, not a neurologist, not even a medical doctor or biochemist. She's an economist, and a pretty pathetic one at that. The claim is that overexposure to antigens weakens the immune system. Two problems with that. One is that vaccines promote the strengthening of the immune system, and the other is that children are now exposed to much fewer antigens than they were 40 years ago. According to a 2002 article in the journal Pediatrics, quote, Although we now give children more vaccines, the actual number of antigens they receive has declined. Whereas previously one vaccine, smallpox, contained about 200 proteins, Now the 11 routinely recommended vaccines contain fewer than 130 proteins in total. Two factors account for this decline. First, the worldwide eradication of smallpox obviated the need for that vaccine. And second, advances in protein chemistry have resulted in vaccines containing fewer antigen. They also said, We would predict that if 11 vaccines were given to infants at one time, then about 0.1% of the immune system would be used up. The science is clear. Vaccines work, and they're one of the safest things you can put into your body. This podcast has covered several stories in the past showing the increase in diseases such as measles in places where the anti-vaccination crowd has managed to get enough of a hold to lower the immunization rate below herd immunity. The evidence is clear. Stop vaccinating, and diseases come back. 
Measles, pertussis, even polio start spreading themselves around again, severely damaging children and adults for life, and even killing them. The Sun and all other news outlets need to stop giving a voice to these dangerous pseudoscientists and start publishing the real information about how safe and effective vaccines are, and it's the Sun's failure to do so that makes them this week's biggest bogan emitter. Now it's time to neuter the nonsensical nitwittedness of this week's Idiot Extraordinary! We mentioned Sonia Farley earlier in the podcast. She was the autocratic city council member of Gould, Arkansas, who thinks that the First Amendment of the Constitution is somehow negotiable. Some people think that preparing segments like this means showing people like her in the worst possible light. Not a bit of it. Most of the incredible idiocy gets cut out so the points can be made. But in this case, the imbecility is so profound that no other person could qualify for this week's slot. And to make the point, I'm just going to play these parts of her interview with Katherine Johnson so you can see for yourself. This same group that's here tonight, if they were so organized, if they one, um, as the Bible says, sowing discord. You don't have to have two meetings. The town is not even big enough where you need two meetings. The Bible says you guilty. You, you are guilty. Just because you go along with it, you're guilty. If this community group, this so-called good advisory committee, is for the town, this, who do you see in here? This is not the town. Goo is made up of quite a few hundreds of people not 45 or 50 people. Goo is made up of hundreds. So no, that's not taking this constitution. And the reason those orders was put in place, because they weren't done right when he had the opportunity to do them. We are a council. We were sworn in January. And you have an obligation to your council. Are we taking those rights from him? Oh, yes, ma'am. Can they be taken from him? Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. So... Us as a council, as of January, is going to decide what is right. And not just on our own. When you look at the figures, when you, when you look at the money, the debt, nobody has any business going home, sitting down, and getting a paycheck. But they need to wake up. They're, they're the ones getting talked about because they're allowing themselves because they won't open their eyes. They won't do the paperwork to see what's right. You're not answering why the council voted to disband this group. Oh, yes, I did. The city cannot afford to pay these bills. And what we've been bills paying. for the group are you paying? The light bill. And In we this building where they meet? That's correct. So you're creating ordinances that they can't meet anywhere and they can't exist. Uh, so instead of having them pay their own bills, you're disbanding no. the group, disbanding any group, which by the ordinance, the way it's written, Includes book clubs, Boy Scouts. I mean, you will go else. through. Hold on. If you wanted to start an organization here, you couldn't just come in here and get with four people and decide you want to start an organization. You will go through your city council with legal documentation, the right paperwork, and get it an approval. Because when you open an organization, especially a non for profit, there's profit. People say it's not for profit, but there's profit. Who's getting it? Y'all the only ones know about it? No. The town, white, blacks, the Mexicans, everybody that makes up goo. Yes, I believe it would. Yeah. But it sounds like this group is open to anyone. It's just that, you know, not that's everybody true. chooses to join it. I know. You must didn't hear me earlier because that's what you was told. But I'm telling you, and there's so many more that don't know about this meeting will tell you that's not true. We, we don't be knowing. No, I wouldn't stand here and lie. We don't know. We just had a council meeting yesterday. I'm sure he knew he was going to have a meeting today like so many other meetings. Actually, I'm sure. I organized this about an hour ago. Okay, then. well, when you organized this an hour ago, because he is the mayor and he had the council member's number, the proper and the right thing to do was to get in touch with at least one of your council members, not the two that's your friend. See, I'm not on a friend thing. I'm not on a mother and daughter thing. I'm on a what's right thing. Well, then they should have called one of us and then the rest of us so we could have came. That was out of order. So 
I'm 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 on the order order kick. I'm on the doing what's right by law kick. That's that's what I'm on. So what exactly you believe is that groups in Gould should not be allowed to meet without council approval? That's correct. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. It it keeps it keeps confusion down. It keeps sowing discord down. Yeah. What about people that might say discourse with the community with opposing views is a good thing? Well, I think it, well, if we had a different frame of mind, yes, but when you have people that, when you have a town this small that is verbally abusing each other, physically abusing each other, no, it's not good. But now I'm going to say this because I said it at the council meeting. It's not hard. You have a council. A council asked you for certain documentations. A council asked you what is your purpose? What are you doing? And all you had to do was present it, and you don't present it. Well, yes, it becomes a problem. Yeah. I think, I think the citizens, the mayor, the Google Citizen Advisory Committee, I think a lot of people have took power just to their self. And you don't think that that's too much government control over the city? No. To keep order? No. Do you think that people have a basic right to assemble? I do. I do. But I think, I think for goo, if it's almost like the debt we're in. If it would have got taken place when it was just 25000 we wouldn't be almost at a million dollars. In everything, you have somebody in control over it. In everything. I guess yeah. I don't understand the harm in letting people meet when they're not the ones passing the laws. They're not the one. you know, I don't understand why the council is threatened by a group of people meeting. We're, we're not threatened. I'm not threatened by a group of people meeting. I don't think it's fair for you to meet with your mother and your friends at City Hall, and it's about the city. That's what you say it's about the city, but yet none of the other citizens know. That's what's harmful. Okay, That's what so caused if, confusion. If you're talking about the city, everyone should know about it. That's correct, yes. Yeah. Don't you agree? Wouldn't you want? But these ordinances aren't yeah. written that way. The ordinances don't say, if you're talking about the city, then everybody has to know. The ordinances say, you cannot be a group and meet. Well, guess what? The ordinance is a little bit deeper than that because if you're a group and you want to meet and it's about the city, well, then everybody is going to know. Yeah, because it's a law. It's a law now. It's not that we're doing what we want to do. It's a law. I don't think any commentary is necessary. We just couldn't be hit in the face with more reasons why Sonia Farley should be this week's Idiot well, that wraps up this pronunciatory edition of the Bogosity Podcast. Please visit the forums at Bogosity.tv where you can read the show notes and participate in discussions about these subjects and anything else you like. And if you'd like to participate in the Bogosity Podcast, you can send a question, statement, news article, or rant to podcast at bogosity.tv. If you put it in an MP3 file, it just might get played in the podcast. Thank you for listening. Until next time, here's a quote from Captain America. Doesn't matter what the press says. Doesn't matter what the politicians or the mob say. Doesn't matter if the whole country decides that something wrong is something right. This nation was founded on one principle above all else. The requirement that we stand up for what we believe, no matter the odds or the consequences. When the mob and the press and the whole world tell you to move, your job is to plant yourself like a tree beside the river of truth and tell the whole world, no, you move. The Bogosity Podcast is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Notary of 3.0 Unported License. Gossip